It's been 467 days since Takesha McKitty was declared brain dead. But only this morning, her heart stopped beating and she passed away. I'm Christina Howard, outside of Brampton Civic Hospital. And for the past 15 months, we've been detailing her family's fight to keep her on life support. Only earlier this month, the Ontario Court of Appeal heard final arguments in her case that challenged that her religious beliefs weren't being respected because she believed that life ends only when your heart stops beating. Very early this morning, that's what happened. When the heart stops, then you're gone. There's no question about that. Uh, the, the, the concept of the brain death, that's a concept, that's a theory, that's a, a diagnosis, prognosis, whatever medically terms you want to put on it. But when the heart stops, and then you know it's final. There's no questioning in that. So there was, we didn't have to question anything. We knew that was it and that she had... Um, she's gone. She went. She's gone home. It's been a long journey for Takesha. She was admitted to Brampton Civic Hospital back in September 2017 after suffering from a drug overdose. She never regained consciousness, but her body kept moving even after she was declared brain dead. Her family had to seek an injunction to prevent the hospital from pulling the plug, challenging the very definition of death and arguing that Takesha's religious freedoms and belief that death only occurs when the heart stops beating were being trampled on. They lost in a Brampton courtroom but appealed. Arguments at the Ontario Court of Appeal were only completed earlier this month. They have not yet issued a ruling. Courts heard the matter. They have all the materials and the evidence. Uh, they're in a position to rule on the matter, and I don't see any reason why they wouldn't rule on the matter. I suspect that both parties would like to see a ruling from the court to provide guidance to both doctors, hospitals, and to other families. Hugh Scher represents Takesha McKitty's family and is experienced in this realm. He also represented the Ununu family in a similar battle to keep their Orthodox Jewish son alive. He died before the decision was rendered and the court ultimately determined it was a moot point. Uh, one of the reasons why the court ruled as it did in declaring the case to be moot in that instance was because it knew that this higher level court of appeal was going to be dealing with the same basic issues in the case that's now before them with Takesha's matter. Stewart is hopeful that his daughter's death and their legal challenges will result in fewer families being placed in this situation. And he says he finds solace that his daughter's death was determined by natural causes. I think there's some comfort um, in knowing that uh, this was along the lines of a not more not natural, um, natural situation. So in that, we take comfort that it was um, God's doing um, and nature. And so with that, we're, comf we're comforted with that. And we're, you know, we're, we're pleased with that, that it was, it was God's will and not man's will. Now, the family is still making final arrangements. If Ontario's highest court does issue a decision, it could redefine death in the province, although too late for Takesha.